As we are meeting here today, the parliament is debating the economic transformation bill. I need not tell you what hardships that we underwent in the last four years. But as we emerge from bankruptcy, we have to remember that we still need foreign exchange to pay for our goods. And the decision of the government was to transform the economy in the next decade to a highly competitive uh, export-oriented economy based on net zero and digitalization. The principles and the institutions are contained in this bill which is being debated today. I hope both sides of the House will vote for it, though there is a big question mark. Nevertheless, I don't intend to speak on the bill itself, but to refer to the role that the tea industry has in achieving this transformation. Our transformation from a feudal economy to a modern economy in the 19th and the 20th century was driven by our plantation industry, by tea. A lot of modernization methods may not have come into being if there was no tea industry. And certainly, Allah would not have been a tourist attraction without the tea industry coming into being. So therefore, now you are at the next stage. And let's be realistic. We are a country which broke up our capital formation, which came out of land, plantations for about 30, 40 years. Now we are trying to recapture that and to bring plantations up to play a role in the future. So let me first tell you the first step. I don't think we need plantations. We need a thriving agribusiness, both of smallholders and large um, management companies who will look at the highest earnings possible. So that is the beginning. So you have to start reforming from inside. And of that two measures I must mention. One, the need to resolve the issue of remunerations. We have to remember that those who worked in the plantations are some of the people who were at the worst end of the bankruptcy in the country. Secondly, to ensure that we come into agribusiness, we will now extract all the line room areas and the surrounding areas and take it back to the government and regather them as villagers so that the line room concept will disappear as people start building. But then that's the part of the world we live in. No one lives next to a factory. They come from nearby. If you go to the coconut estates, we don't have anyone living in our, the lands that belong to us. So that especially because the multidimensional poverty indicators in newer are very high. Higher than some of the northern areas which were affected by war. So these are some of the issues we have to resolve. Thirdly, there is the question of the debt that have been incurred by some of the enterprises, especially the small enterprises during this period and how do we resolve it. Fourthly, matter which concerns us and others, the access to the Russian market. Actually, sanctions have not in any way put back Russia. They have somehow or other come into Asia. The problem is for those of us who have to trade with Russia. And maybe those will require a new look, and we, but we'd have to wait the outcome of the US presidential election. Till then, you have to use your means of how you get your tea across to Russia, which I should not know. That's the only <laughs> But there is now, what is the model of our enterprises? Are we, we have the smallholders, and how do the plantation industry become agribusiness? And are we going to stay only to tea, or are we going to allow smart agriculture in your areas? Give you a mix. Those some of them forestry. And in time to come, there will be land that will be opened out in other parts of the country for agribusinesses to grow. So there are opportunities of applying. I, I have no issue on that. Some of our companies have gone abroad, and they have also establish themselves elsewhere, that's not a problem with the government. As long as we are the biggest player in the game, subject to that, we can go ahead. Because Sri Lanka must have a dominating position in the market. But having said that, what is the future of tea? Are people going to drink tea the way we drink tea? What are the millennials, Gen Zs and all going to do? Now that's your future. And that future is not in Sri Lanka except for the promotion and the R&D you're doing here. You have to carry your battle straight into these areas, into Europe, into Americas. Are they going to drink iced tea? Are they going to have a tea drink? We do not know that. And to help that, Sri Lanka is now, will bring the climate change legislation and the new environment laws which will enable us to 
uh, hit net zero even before the target date. So that is the help that we can do there. But what people are going to drink is something you all have to decide. Or will you be, will you be eating something with tea? We don't know. We just can't say what it is. And that is where the battle is. So we have to now look at the TRI. What have they done? What should they do for the future? And make it joint partnership between government, which will provide funding, and the private sector. So I think in a way, we have to look at now, not the tea board or the tea smallholders. They are all there. They have to be restructured. But the Tea Research Institute and how I'm going to build it up. So those are my thoughts on the industry. All of the ones who are in the game. And it's for us to look at the future because many of the problems we have mentioned are capable of being settled by us. But we have a future out there. And how are we going to keep those markets and expand it? So I wish you all the best in your deliberation. Thank you.